do a sound check real quick if that's okay with you, Drew. Check one, two, state of the city. Everyone stand by. Here we go in three, two, one. Welcome to the My Rowlet Podcast. I'm your host, Hannah Rabelais, and today's episode is the state of the city with your city of Rowlet Mayor, Blake Margolis. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Hannah. I'm excited to celebrate Rowlet and its great future, and let's get started. You were elected as our mayor this past May, and I am so honored to sit down with you for your first State of the City address. I want to know, how does it feel to be mayor of Rowlett? Well, first, I am immensely thankful to the citizens for putting their trust in me to serve in this position. Sometimes I have to pinch myself. I was only six years old when I first had this idea that popped into my head. And it was at a town hall, Rowlett town hall meeting, regarding a future park called Mayor's Park in the northeast quadrant of Rowlett. And it was at that point where I looked across the table at the uh, elected officials who were serving and said, you know, one day I wouldn't mind to be over there. And here I am. Here you so, are. So <laughs> um, it's definitely a privilege to be in this position, and I'm, I'm happy to serve this great community every day. You and our city council have been very busy since your election. I'm curious to know what, what drives you, what is your motivation? Well, if there's a theme for this year's State of the City Address, and my tenure as mayor, it's, it's got to be community first. Everything that we do, every decision we make, we put our community first. For example, the ongoing negotiations with the North Texas Municipal Water District is an example. Mm, that's a great topic to start with. The city of Rowlett submitted a petition to be annexed into the North Texas Municipal Water District. Membership will give us the opportunity to participate in the policies and practices that affect Rowlett water customers. In addition, members do not have to pay the customer city premium that member cities pay. In terms of water usage, Rowlett would be the eighth largest water user among the 13 member cities of the water district. The petition for membership was approved by the Rowlett City Council on December 6th. I, along with the rest of your city council, will continue to vigorously advocate to give our community a seat at the table and a voice in the matters affecting our future. We all know that public safety is near and dear to your heart. And as we grow, how is our city keeping up with a larger population? Our residents deserve a safe community and that is ultimately priority number one. We address public safety challenges by increasing staffing and equipment. In 2022, we increased our police personnel by adding four additional police officers and one additional detention officer. And this year, we will be adding another eight police officers. Our recruiting and hiring continues to be phenomenal in this department, and our diversity among women and law enforcement is beating the national average of 13%, with our current total at 20%. Our communication center is also now fully staffed, a huge accomplishment for such an intense and demanding job. And after a nationwide search, we hired our new police chief, Michael Denning, from Henderson, Nevada. What a great addition to our community. I'm just, uh, I couldn't be more thankful for the level of support uh, from our community. You know, the partnership that we have, the police and the community is so valuable and so precious. And we are going as a department to really lean into the community and continue to enhance and build on those partnerships that, that are already there and do even more uh, so that we can work together with the community to not only prevent crime, but improve everyone's quality of life here in the city of Rowlett. Uh, you know, I'm a resident here in Rowlett and I'm a proud resident and this is my community, this is my home. And I've committed to this agency that I will do everything in my power to help make it one of the best cities, safest cities to live in in the state of Texas. In 2022, the Rowlett Fire Department took delivery of a new fire apparatus. This fully equipped 75 foot tall ladder truck is housed at Fire Station 4. And this year, the fire department took delivery of a 100 foot platform ladder truck and a rescue style pumper engine. These additions to our public safety fleet will enhance the ability to provide expedient life and property saving response for our growing community. Our current council has been very supportive and we're blessed to have a group that is so dedicated to making sure that public safety, fire police is taken care of in the fashion that they're taken care of. And they've been dedicated to making sure that we maintain our replacement schedule on our apparatus so that we can take our service and respond and make sure our response times are where they should be and take our service to our citizens. 
we need to keep our residents aware of severe weather and other potential dangers. To that end, nine outdoor warning sirens were installed in October, with more being installed this year. The state-of-the-art technology carries the ability not only to be louder, but to also be able to monitor specific weather conditions at each location. The primary hazard that we activate the system for will be for tornadoes, but we also activate for hail, damaging winds, and flooding, specifically flash flooding. But there are also non-weather related hazards that we will activate the system for, including any hazardous material incidents, civil unrest, and civil defense. So Chief Dinning isn't the only new leadership the city has gained recently. That's right. So we've also hired a new municipal judge, uh, Chris Gilgore, who is not new to Rowlett, and we are honored to have him in this position. We also went through an election last May where I was elected mayor and we added four new council members, Brian Galawardi, Jeff Winget, Mike Britton, and Deb Schinder. And we have another election coming up in May of 2023, but more on that later. There's more change on the horizon. Brian Funderburg announced his retirement as city manager, and we are currently in the process of engaging SGR in a nationwide search for the next city manager. You know, it's been a real pleasure. Um, there's been a lot of change in this community over that time. You think about 20 years, it's a long, long period of time. Um, we've seen this city grow in terms of economic development, um, number of households, businesses. Um, it has been an incredible experience. I, I love the, uh, the day that we signed the, the paperwork to buy uh, Sapphire Bay from the city of Dallas. That was, that was a crowning achievement at the time for a project now that's expected to be over two billion dollars you know for example um, and I think you know there's also been some that have been a little more heart-wrenching for example uh, the day after the tornado um, and uh, the 2015 tornado that was rough that was really rough you know so I see this community being successful regardless and I'm so excited about Rowlett's future 2022 was a great year for economic development in Rowlett. I felt like every time I turned around, there was another ribbon cutting or another business opening. Yes, that's amazing. And did you know we were named the best area to buy a house around Dallas by House Digest? Oh, I think I saw that on Facebook, yes. actually. I think you might have posted it. Probably. <laughs> we have some great opportunities in this community. Rowlett continues to see sales tax growth in the retail and restaurant segments. One of the things I value so much about Rowlett's business community is that it's so diverse and mostly consists of small businesses. To me, this is the best kind of economic development that you can ask for because small businesses have significant buy-in into the community. They are our community members and are a key part of our success. In 2022, our top 40 sales tax generators increased sales tax revenue by $263,000 or 6.8%. Our biggest development news for the North Shore was the announcement of the new Lakeview Business District, which is scheduled to break ground in early 2023. And infrastructure has been completed at Sapphire Bay. We have since issued over $456,000 in permits valued at over $165 million for multifamily and townhomes. And in addition, the Sapphire Bay Marina completed their new renovations and parking lot, and they announced the $3 million Bay Walk project that will house two to three lakefront restaurants. Downtown Rowlett is the heart of our city and we need to guarantee its success and sustainability. Our economic development team recently announced our new downtown manager, Bridget Bice, who comes to Rowlett with 25 years of experience in Main Street downtown management and development. You know, we had 57 new businesses, which is the most we've had since 2017. And they added 464 jobs, uh, $88 million in capital investment. So there's a lot of exciting things happening here, new businesses coming in and um, both in existing spaces and, and building new, brand new spaces. So we see that continuing uh, to come in the next year. And then of course we have the North Shore Project. He mentioned the Lakeview Business District. So that's going to create lots of great quality jobs that we don't have here. You know, we have a large out commute rate for people um, that live in Rowlett but don't work here. And there's just a lot of interest in North Shore because of that uh, project and uh, so there's lots of developers looking up there and talking with the property owners and then of course Sapphire Bay is always um, an exciting uh, project to talk about so there's lots of activity happening down there we do have more commercial projects coming online soon so there's so much growth and activity it's just a great time to be in economic development in Rowlett.
We've mentioned how our city is growing a few times already during this address. More people means more cars and trucks on our roadways, and it also means more water and sewage being used. You're right, and we're continuing to address infrastructure needs through increased investment and future bond elections, and we must prepare and plan for the future. In fiscal year 2022, we spent $6.7 million on roadway infrastructure and $5.6 million on water and sewer infrastructure. Our public works team patched 2,254 potholes and we cleaned 670,000 feet of sewer main, televised 90,000 feet of sewer main, and replaced 1,500 feet of water line on Dowrock Road. More significantly, the city's Pavement Condition Index, or PCI, was assessed over the entire city, which gave us a much more accurate information reading. While the numbers are lower than we have previously reported, they are much more accurate and will provide better intel for future planning. Also in 2022, the engineering department successfully completed the State Highway 66 30-inch sewer replacement along the lakeshore, the Lake Highlands Park Trail System, two alley reconstruction projects, and CDBG sidewalks. Projects currently under construction include Lake Highland streets, water and sewer and drainage improvements, the Dowrock South Curve safety improvements, the widening of Miller Road from Dowrock to Glen Hill, and an alley project near Katy Park. To prepare for the city's future needs, planning is underway for additional projects. Those include the Merritt Road interconnector, which will extend Merritt Road from PGBT to Liberty Grove. Chisa Road will be widened from Dowrock to Miller Road. Five right turn lanes will add capacity to some high volume intersections around town. 36 inch and 30 inch water lines will be installed on Merritt Road from PGBT to Chisa Road. Plus various streets, alleys and neighborhoods will undergo reconstruction. Let's switch gears a little bit. Rowlett has become known for family-friendly special events and activities, and most of them totally free. But the past few years in 2020 and 2021, we were not able to have either or have certain events or make adjustments to keep everyone safe. But that was not the case for 2022. Correct. We were able to have 20 special events and added a new event series, NeighborFest. In total, we welcomed over 35,000 attendees across the 2022 events. That is wow. pretty amazing. That's amazing. Thanks for showing out, Brella. Yes. <laughs> I am so grateful we were able to have our Easter egg hunt, our 4th of July festivities, and we were finally able to get out of our cars and back to normal for the Trunk or Treat event. And we were able to add a new event that I was excited about, our first annual emergency preparedness fair, which Atmos generously provided a $3,000 donation to support this event. I was honored to be the Grand Marshal for a holiday parade, and it's one of the highest attendance holiday parades and festivals we've had in a long time. Special events definitely build community here because you get to see other people and meet people in the community and maybe get to you know invite them to the next event, kind of like the farmer's market. I know a lot of people meet up and come each week, and that's like their little hangout with their families and other friends. The library even saw a significant increase in participation in its summer reading program. All you have to do is come in, sign up, and we will get you your packet and information, and you can participate in all of our activities for free. So that includes our Maker Mondays, that's all ages. It includes any of our guest speakers that come in. It includes um, your chances for the raffles at the grand prizes. I mean, it's all free. One of the reasons we're doing your State of the City Address on the My Rowlett podcast interview show is to highlight how we've increased communications from the city. It's really been a big year for us. Right. We now have even more ways for our citizens to receive information on what is happening in our city. In last year, the communications team launched this podcast. The My Rowlett podcast has three components. First, you can listen to in-depth conversations from city leaders and citizens. Second is the Mayor's Spotlight, where you can hear us discuss in-depth my monthly newsletter. And finally, you can listen to the weekly Friday at 5 episodes, which provides the most current, up-to-date weekly news. This is an addition to our popular weekly video series on social media channels, which we share on our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Our LinkedIn presence is also something new from last year. We are so excited to share information through a myriad of avenues and channels so you can stay informed and in the know. Let's talk about the future. What is on the horizon for our city? Well, first off, the city's current solid waste contract with FCC expires in September of 2024. Due to inflation and other factors, trash and recycling pricing will be changing in the future. Last fall, we released a survey to collect your feedback on what you want from our new service provider. 
Providers require an 18 month lead time and we will be awarding a new contract by the end of the year. We have accepted bids and are now in the process of working with stakeholders to make the best decision for you, our residents, based on your feedback. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a city council general election taking place May 6th. Many citizens have pulled packets and submitted their documents to be on the ballot. It is a time commitment, but an honor to represent our fellow neighbors. And on the same ballot, we are asking the voters to exercise the right to vote on a facilities bond. Council is considering putting various propositions on the bond election. That would include a new public safety administration building, which would include municipal court, jail, and a police department. And then the other uh, one is the new animal services building because of the capacity issues in our animal shelter. Uh, and then the other one would be for Herforth Park improvements. So those are some of the things that council is considering putting on the May 2023 ballot. Well, that is exciting to hear. So y'all stay tuned to our social media channels, our newsletters, et cetera, because we will be pushing that information out once it is made public. That about wraps it up for my questions. Is there anything else you'd like to tell our citizens? Rowlett is my home, it is your home, and we want to be proud of the community we live in. As I look at the state of our city, we have a lot to celebrate. A growing community that still maintains a small town feel, a community that prioritizes public safety and quality of life, a community which celebrates its diversity of people and cultures, a community that has access to great programs and education, a community that has immense potential, and a community that we can all be proud of to call home regardless of our differences. Thank you for viewing the state of our city and thank you for everything you do to make Rowlett a great place to live, work, and play. Thank you.